Right, this is the heart of Paul's car and I thought I'd go through some of the componentry and explain what it does and how it works. We'll start with the engine, which is a custom designed drag specific engine by STM. It uses a Mitsubishi 4G64 block with a custom billet crankshaft, aluminium forged rods and high compression aluminium JE pistons to give a total displacement of 2.1 litres. Now the idea behind that is the stroke of the crankshaft is still low enough that it allows the engine to rev to 10.5 or 11,000 RPM. The extra capacity still gives a small increase over the factory 2 litres and we get a better rod to stroke ratio which improves torque and power. Bolted to the top of the block is a CNC ported Cosworth cylinder head using oversized stainless valves, competition double valve springs and custom billet drag cams. We've got a pair of HKS vernier adjustable cam gears and an HKS high strength timing belt to time the whole engine up. One of the more unusual aspects of this engine is the fuel delivery. A methanol drag engine will consume a hell of a lot of fuel, particularly when we're making 11 or 1200 horsepower. Normally electric pumps will struggle to deliver this amount of fuel, so the system that Paul's developed is twofold. First of all, we've got a fuel cell mounted down here in the right hand front corner of the engine bay. Drawing from that is a large Magna Fuel electric fuel pump, which primes and feeds fuel up into the Aeromotive mechanical pump, which you can see is mounted off this custom billet CNC bracket made by Magnus Motorsport and is driven off the exhaust cam. So that's a mechanical pump that is used to force the fuel into the fuel rails to supply the engine. Moving on to those fuel rails, we can see we've got a Hypertune aluminium plenum which is made custom with dual fuel rails. So that mounts eight injector dynamics ID2000 injectors on alloy billet fuel rails. From the fuel rails, the fuel flows back to an aeromotive adjustable fuel pressure regulator before returning to the tank. On the hot side of the engine, we've got a custom stainless exhaust manifold manufactured by STM. It incorporates a burn stainless merge collector to get the ultimate flow into the turbocharger and get the best spool possible. The turbocharger itself is a precision 88mm turbo which is rated at close to 1500 horsepower. You can see there's no air filter in this setup, we're only worried about one short run down the drag strip so it uses a carbon fibre intake to replace the left hand side headlight and feeds cold air direct into the compressor inlet. The last step of the hurdle is igniting the fuel and air mixture and that can be really difficult when we're running really high boost pressure on methanol fuel. To get the job done, Paul's relying on SparkTech CDI coils and an MNW CDI ignition computer. Inside the car is pretty simple, it's pretty sort of stripped bare. All we've got is the absolute essentials to get the job done and keep the driver safe. That starts with the fairly extensive roll cage and you can see it's got a, a, a cage that runs around the driver's head as well to protect the driver in case of a rollover. We've obviously got the race seat, the race harness, uh, the doors are all made out of carbon fibre now to keep the weight down and all of the glass has been replaced with Lexan, again just all in the, the name of saving some weight. Okay so in terms of the electronics, we've got a switch panel up here which gives the driver um, the ability to control everything he needs to, start everything up, turn on and off the fuel pumps, the fan and then shut everything down at the end of the strip. Just below that mounted is the little shift light. Now really in a car like this you don't take any notice of a rev counter, you just simply don't have time. So that shift light is the one thing the driver needs to concentrate on and every time that shift light comes on you need to pluck the next gear. I wanted to talk a little bit about how you actually change gear in this car because it's quite unusual. So instead of the normal 5 speed factory gearbox, it's been replaced with a 4 speed dog engagement gear set designed specifically for drag racing. That's coupled with this IKEA sequential gear selection mechanism which takes it from a factory H pattern and turns it into a sequential gearbox. So that means all we need to do is either pull back on the lever to change up a gear or push back forwards on the lever to change back down. Now because it's a dog box we don't need to use the clutch either so from the moment the driver leaves the start line you keep your foot pinned on the throttle 
and don't touch the clutch. Now in this car we've gone one step further and Paul's actually bought an STM Ghost Shifter kit which works with the IKEA. And in a nutshell that, ad that adds on an air ram which is driver controlled. So that air ram actually makes the uh, shifter move and all Paul has to do is keep both hands on the steering wheel and as soon as he sees that shift light glow he just presses the button on the steering wheel and the computer takes con control of the gear shift It'll cut the ignition to let the gearbox change gear and then it'll actuate the air ram to change into the next gear. And that all happens in a matter of about 50 or 60 milliseconds. So it's much faster and much smoother than you can do it by hand. And it's also much more repeatable. Talking about the electronics package, Paul selected the Link G4 Extreme ECU to run the engine. So we've got that mounted over in the passenger's footwell. There's a small link display unit in front of the driver that gives valuable information such as engine RPM, engine coolant temperature and intake air temperature. The link also takes inputs from some external sensors such as an Innovate wideband controller, oil pressure, fuel pressure sensors, so we can data log that sort of information at the racetrack and make changes to the tune after a run. We've also got here a hydraulic handbrake, pretty familiar to anyone with a drift car. The hydraulic handbrake is just used during the staging procedure so that Paul can preload the drivetrain with the clutch before he actually drops the clutch at the start line. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.